viewers power tour day one uh we're at andrew's place right now the hornet and the Datsun made it here which is like i don't know 10 15 miles away so should be good for 2000 plus Datsun's going up in the air right now i realized when i pulled out the speedometer pinion that i forgot to well i possibly forgot to tighten it so i'm going to slide under the passenger side of the car and throw a 10 mil on that bolt make sure it's nice and tight um, and then I think we're gonna fix the radio because I must not have hooked the power back up to it. So, anyway, after this, we need a gas station stop and we're gonna hit the road. Fuel stop, first time, everybody's here. Uh, let's see, had to refix the uh, temporary plate there because it was the hatch leaks a little bit. Anyway, first leg of the trip here, we got full tanks of gas. We're gonna see how far we can make it. Uh, I don't know, probably stop. I think the Hornet is gonna be the gas sucker on this one, but we'll see what happens. So join us, won't you? Power Tour Day 1. Actually, we were trying to stop at 100 miles, but we made it further than that. Uh, what are we like? 100 and probably 1,520 miles in, something like yeah. that. Oh yeah. 120, 120 miles. Made it that far. A couple of things are going on. Uh, let's see. That's interesting. Looks like just dirt. I hope. Okay. A couple things going on. We are rubbing tire just a little bit on the right rear, right here. Just a little bit. It's minor right now, uh, but the car is pretty weighted down with tools and bags and stuff. So um, we are rearranging some stuff right now, trying to get a little weight out of the rear end of this car. We might put some stuff for tools maybe in Steve's car. He's got an open passenger seat. We might stuff some stuff over there. So we've rearranged a little bit, see if we can take a little bit of the weight off. Uh, we did see the temperature come up just a little bit. The gauge in the car is about 15 degrees high. So when it's reading 190 with a temperature gun on the actual engine, it's uh, 175. So we're still plenty safe on temperature, but we've uh, rearranged a few things here. So yeah, we're gonna grab something to eat, let these things cool off, take a little break, and then hit the road. Uh, the Datsun is getting a little bit warm, and wouldn't you know it, it's because of the overflow bottle that I did not install. So this thing has like a inline fill neck, uh, we bought some hose here at a farming fleet. Uh, we're gonna put a jug behind the headlight, zip tie it in place, and top her off some coolant, bubble it a little bit, and get on the road. Greetings viewers, yet another fuel stop. Hornets down another half tank. How many miles did you say we just covered? Probably another 70, yeah, 70, something like that. 70, 80 miles. Uh, what we've noticed in the Datsun is it's low. And when you pack a bunch of crap into a car that's already sitting low, It'll rub tires a little bit so we're gonna jack the car up and uh, see if I can't adjust on those fenders a little bit in the rear see if I can't pound the arches out just a little bit with a hammer maybe pry them out just a smidge make a tiny bit more clearance we're also moving our tool tub over to the Hornet passenger seat okay so right at the top of the fender lip here uh, yeah there's uh, chunks of rubber so I'm gonna try to adjust on this a little bit more with my hammer. If that doesn't work, we might jam the jack handle between the tire and the fender. Better roll it? Uh, just to roll it a little bit more. So, see if that works. We have, All right. you want that too much? I don't know. So it's right here, huh? I don't know, that's... Sounds nice. Do you want a pair of safety glasses? I'm safety squinting. All right, squint harder. That's that real 1970s feel yet. Right, okay. Uh, yeah, I think next we're gonna try using the jack handle method. See if I can't get this stretch out just a little bit more. Let that tire go up in there. All right, here's how not to roll your fender lips on a car in the gas station parking lot a couple hundred miles from home. Don't do this. 
I'm doing it just because. So don't listen to me. All right. Uh, Up a little? Yeah. Definitely. Oh, that's pretty crazy. Whack yourself in the face with this thing. Woo. Like I said, don't do what I do. Is that all the way down? Yeah, we'll take a look here. Oh yeah. Good, let's try the other side. Oh, hold on. Maybe this one I feel like, yeah, is not it's as closer. Maybe, yeah. Let's hit this side. We're gonna hit this side one more time. Yeah, let's hit the, let's hit this side one more time. Okay, rolled the fender lips on both sides. I think we got just enough clearance. We're gonna swap some stuff around between the Hornet and the Datsun to better distribute some weight. So hopefully we don't chirp that tire anymore. Um, and we're gonna hit the road. Okay, viewers, we are, what, eight, eight, eight miles. miles or so outside of Champaign, Illinois. Uh, that's actually past our halfway point. We were originally shooting for Bloomington. Uh, we decided to keep on trucking and hit uh, Champaign. So let's see, we just filled up the car with eight and a half gallons of fuel, and we've gone roughly 206 miles. Uh, calculated out. The Datsun here is making an astonishing 24.2 miles a gallon. I can't believe it. Uh, I know we're staying out of boost on this trip, so that's helping a ton. But you guys know that this is running uh, batch fire and, and uh, wasted spark setup, so that's not the most efficient. But a little four banger with turbo, 24.2 miles a gallon with the trunk loaded down. We do still have a little bit of tire rubbing on that rear right tire. Uh, we plan on addressing that in the hotel parking lot when we get there. We're gonna jack it up, pull the wheel off, and get a little bit more aggressive with our jack handle rolling method. Uh, let's see, the Hornet, everything seems okay. Other than uh, we have do, we do have a left rear brake that's getting a little bit warm. Not too bad right now. Okay, I take, self I take that back, yeah, self-adjusted, and is no longer getting hot. Absolutely not. Okay, so that fixed itself. Never mind, it was never a problem. I'll delete that out of the footage. Uh, Hornet's staying cool. Running a solid, what, 160 all the time? Yeah. Yeah, things are going well. We're gonna hit the hotel, uh, get some food, and then do a little bit of maintenance on these things, and uh, call it a night. So we'll check in when we're working on stuff. Viewers, oh my goodness. Here we are, finally, we made it to our hotel for the night. Um, the two cars made it here almost without issue. The Datsun is, is peeing just a little bit of water out of the incredibly professionally installed overflow jug that we put on there. Otherwise, temperature never got above 160. Uh, Coronet stays super cool, and we did check that brake at the last gas station. It was also still cool, and it is still that way. So I think we're going to check into the hotel, unload some stuff, and then come right back out here. We're gonna pull that right rear wheel off of the Datsun one more time and see if we can't uh, massage that fender just a little bit more. So here's a look at uh, the digs that made it here. Notice the spare tire location. I'm using that roof rack. Check this out. Steve, can you pop the hatch on the so we can see how it's packed? This thing is packed literally to the gills. We're using it like a pickup truck. Check this out. Yeah, this thing is packed all the way to the edge of the back seat and almost to the glass. So anyway, we're gonna check in. We'll be right back out here at Wrench. Good morning, viewers. Uh, it's morning of day two for us, but this is actually still pre-power tour. Uh, let's see, nothing happened with the cars overnight. We did make a couple changes to the Datsun this morning. Uh, the impromptu overflow jug is working flawlessly. 
Uh, we've made a couple modifications to our catch can. We have our remote filter mounted somewhere underneath the car so we don't smell as many oil fumes. And we also put uh, a different tune-up in the car this morning. We took a bunch of timing out of the map uh, near 100 kPa and above into boost. We were detonating a little bit yesterday anytime I would get on it. So pulled a bunch more timing out to hopefully make this thing cruise a little bit safer today. Uh, who knows, maybe later on today we may try some auto-tune stuff again. Try to smooth out the fuel map a little bit more. But it's working pretty good so far. So I think we're gonna hit local parts store maybe, pack up or you know, grab a few more supplies, and then uh, road to Bowling Green this afternoon for credential pickup. All right, viewers, here we go. First start up on the new map. Let's see. Yeah. All right, viewers, uh, let's see. I think the last clip you saw, we were just peacefully cruising through wherever we were, Kentucky, I think. <laughs> well, we stopped for lunch, and the tire rubbing issue on the right rear is becoming a real pain in the rear. <laughs> no pun intended. So right now we are at the world famous Harbor Freight. We found one in Indiana, 10 miles from where we stopped for lunch. Right now the guys are working for me. This is ridiculous. I feel like a celebrity. I should be doing some work, but lazy bum. Yeah, right? So here's what we picked up. We actually found Harbor Freight makes these jack stand pads. We're gonna take these two, tape them together, and then drill a hole and zip tie these around the axle tube to create a bump stop. There are no bump stops in this car. So we're gonna try to create our own bump stop to stop the tire from going so far up into the fender so it doesn't bottom out. This is gonna result in a really, really crappy ride, but if we can save the tires, I really don't care. Yeah, here's what we got. Let me see if you guys can see this. Oh, he's, okay. Andrew's taping them up right now. So that's actually the brick that we're making right there out of two of them. It's not, if we can cut the cardboard around it, just up tape around the packaging. That's what I'm saying, I'll hold them yeah. together. So this is our, this is our <laughs> DIY bump stop oh. right here. I don't know how long these are gonna last, but they look like they're gonna do the trick. So we're gonna drill a couple holes through these and zip time to the axle tube. So here we are. It's nothing really to see here, except beating a Datsun into submission. It's completely normal. All right, viewers, we got the bump stops in. Doesn't look a lot different from the side, but we're kind of rubbing on the bump stops, but I think it's gonna keep the tires out of the fender. So we're gonna give it a test right when we leave here. Uh, I think that's gonna solve it. At least it's gonna solve it for today and maybe the rest of the trip. So we're gonna pack up our tools and uh, use the facilities here at beautiful Harbor Freight and hit the road.
Good morning, viewers. It's the morning of day one. Uh, we're here in the parking lot, and we did a little bit of maintenance on the brakes on the Hornet. Uh, we found that we think maybe the e-brake cable was sticking, so the e-brake was maybe engaging or disengaging partially. We have discovered a pretty serious issue on the Datsun, though. So all the times yesterday that we pancaked this car on the highway at 70 miles an hour and absolutely smashed the exhaust into the underside of the car, turns out we broke a bolt or two on the downpipe of the turbo. The downpipe was hanging on with one bolt, so one of them's broken off, one of them is seized in there, and we have two other ones. Of course, I didn't bring any spare bolts for that. Um, all the lock washers and stuff fell off, so what we're gonna do now is head to a local hardware store, get some more hardware, a uh, different Allen wrench, and we're gonna come back and try to get that thing tightened back up uh, so we can maybe hit the venue. So yeah, a couple quick repairs this morning, and we also have to try to find some air shock. Could turn into an adventure today. Okay, yeah. So. We had one bolt break off the downpipe. Uh, we found some exhaust studs at an O'Reilly's. We're gonna blue Loctite those in because that's what we have. So this will get us back to actually having bolts in the downpipe instead of this thing just flapping in the wind like it was yesterday. I blame, what are we gonna blame? Indiana roads or or Kentucky roads or? Well, some, Illinois really. Someone's roads are the problem as to why this happened. in the downpipe we have three out of four next thing we're gonna do is raise the front of the car with Andrew and I our fat asses in the front we lower this thing down so much that that exhaust is pretty much dragging on the ground everywhere so we lift the car up and we're gonna go two turns on the coilovers up which should gain us roughly a half inch to three quarters of an inch of ground clearance uh, later we're gonna put air shocks in the back so that should help lift the rear this thing's gonna look like a 4 by 4 but hopefully it'll get us home so go to the other side and hit two turns on that all right, so we made a friend along the way here. Uh, that's Jack over there. This is, what year is this? The 57. This is a 57 Nomad Bel Air trim wagon. Look at this thing. I mean, look at the freaking interior on this car. Oh my goodness, is this thing clean. We call it a Nomad with the trim that it's on. Oh, okay, it's actually called, all right, a Nomad with the trim. Look at the dash on this car. Holy shit, is that cool. So this is a 383 stroker. My God, is it clean. Jack met up with us in the hotel parking lot. He saw us wrenching on the Datsun. So we've made a couple friends. He's gonna roll with us. We're gonna head to O'Reilly after this and pick up air shocks for the Datsun and then head to the event. Already from the six feet from the hotel over there to this gas station, we did not crunch the exhaust on the ground. So hopefully raising the coilovers in the front and our bump stops in the back are gonna do it. All right, we're in line trying to get into Power Tour Stop 1. I have heard nightmare tales that it takes two plus hours to get into the event. And so far, I think we're probably 30 minutes in to the stop and go standstill traffic to get in. Um, let's see, so far cooling system seems to be doing well. Uh, I don't think we're anywhere over maybe 180 degrees. Um, the increased height on the front suspension seems to be helping with keeping the exhaust off the ground. Uh, bump stops are working, so we're just uh, sitting here in line. Trying to get in for a first stop and maybe get some lunch, hang out for a while, and who knows, maybe we'll throw some shocks on this thing. We'll see. But keep you guys posted. So far, it's taking a while. Okay, viewers, we have made it to stop number one at Power Tour. We're parked in a field somewhere near the event. We're going to walk our way in and get checked in and 
I don't know, meet up with S Motorsports and maybe grab lunch right away because you all know this guy is starving. So we're gonna check this out. That's an there. Oh yeah. Yeah, Heather needs proof of life. You made it. Nonsense know how sticker on there and Mortski. Pontiac hearse. Yeah, I dig it. We were uh, about to wrench on the dots, and then he rolls up in none other than the C10 right here. Oh yeah. Yeah, asking if we need any help. Yeah, freaking a, man. Quick here, Diggs. That's good. Here we've been saying you want for 35 minutes. Right. Oh. <laughs> oh. Right. Exactly. We're out. Yeah. Dude, you're I from, got some leftover venison in the fridge. I was gonna say you're from Iowa, but yeah, you know how to speak. <laughs> oh, don't you? Well, I drove right? them in oh. a soda truck. So right. Yeah, exactly. I off after 12 hours. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, right? Well, yeah, we're gonna see if we can't get shocks on this thing and maybe suck a few teas with Kevin. Yeah, who needs a beer? I do. I have a beer about it. Ooh. Hey. Oh. <laughs> I was gonna say, Angus, I can't imagine him being angry. Oh, well, yeah, I, I got, got a tea over too. there, but. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Well, we'll I'm... keep that one cold until you need another tea. All right, well, okay, yeah. Smart, smart. Oh. Specific. Did you find the battery for your assault ratchet? I've already used it. All oh, right. Where have you guys been? Holy cow. I'm just running circles around you guys. You are? Yeah. Yeah, I'm very distracted. My though. goodness, man. What are you doing? There's Buick guys and Buick stuff all over. Oh, there are some. Did you see that guy special over there? All right. This one should be ready to go in. Hold on. What do you got here? You want the fittings in now or after I put it in? Well, the fact that they have these little tiny O-rings thinks maybe we should put them in now. Okay, there you go. All right, viewers, that I think is gonna conclude day one of Power Tour for us. I think we're gonna hang out in the parking lot here, sit and wait for the line to die down getting out. I think that's gonna do it for us for today.